I've been involved in the pro-life movement my entire life, and all of us typically get involved for life and speaking for life and leading on life, typically because it's personal. For me, it was no different. Six, uh, 56 years ago, a young 15-year-old girl became pregnant. She had a lot of difficult choices to make, maybe more so than some teen girls. She was raped. But this 15-year-old girl chose to give her child life and then to place that child with an adoptive family. And that child was me. My biological father is a rapist. I don't even know my ethnicity. But I am still a human being. And I still have value. And my life is not worth less than yours just because of the way I was conceived. And I do not believe that I deserve the death penalty because of the crime of my biological father. And this is, I have listened to the rhetoric my whole life. My whole life I've listened to people say, well, every child should be wanted and planned. I've heard this said in the church. Well, I wouldn't have an abortion. That's horrible. I wouldn't kill my child. But if it were rape, you're a mistake, Pam. I don't believe that. I believe that every child is wanted by someone. And I believe that God in his mercy had a plan for me. I have not met my birth mom. Someday I hope to. She is my hero. Uh, if I don't meet her here on earth, I'm going to meet her in heaven. I've been praying for her since I was four years old. And someday when we meet, I'm going to wrap my arms around her and I'm going to tell her I love her because she loved me. Loved me enough to give me my life and then loved me enough to give me the next most special gift I was ever given. And that's my family. I'm the oldest of eight children. Seven of us adopted. Every color of the rainbow in my family, we are the United Nations by ourselves. And I know that my amazing godly family was a gift from a very scared 15 year old girl. I have spent my life walking alongside women experiencing crisis pregnancies because I know that what my birth mother needed in that horrible moment of trauma was not to have me violently ripped from her womb, not to repay violence with more violence. What she needed was someone to love her. What she needed was someone to come alongside her. Someone to say, we're going to be here for you. You don't have to do this alone. We will walk with you. What she needed was love and protection, not the violence of abortion. When you advocate abortion in the case of rape, you're not only killing an innocent child, you are further damaging the woman. The only person you are helping in that situation is the rapist. The only person who wins is the rapist. And that's why it's so important that we are clear when we communicate the reasons for not accepting rape as an exception. And I've had to deal with this at every level, federal, state level, when we pass laws and some of our pro-life counterparts call their law pro-life and then immediately, no matter the tiniest law you can imagine from parental notification, they throw in except in the cases of rape. And they take an entire group of human beings and throw us under the bus and say our lives don't matter and my life doesn't deserve protection simply because of the way in which I was conceived. That has to end and that's why personhood is so desperately important. It makes zero exceptions. None. This is a person created in the image of God from the moment of conception until natu natu uh, natural death. Now, can I say this because it's the men's march and because I'm the sex lady, so. I firmly believe that God's called men to lead. You are called to be our protector. And when we talk about these issues from sexuality to abortion to all these issues, the people being most damaged are women. And the people needing a protection are women and that's what God called you to do. You have a voice. You must have a voice. Don't dare tell the culture because of your certain body parts, you're not allowed to speak on this issue. You are not only allowed to speak, you must speak and you must lead and you must show a generation of young men what it means to treat women with honor and respect. And that's what God's calling you to do, to be our protectors, to be our champions, to be our leaders. Uh, yes, for the on board, but for women as well. 
We need honorable husbands and fathers and sons and men of God. And so I, I'm just calling on you to take up that mantle and be that man of God and be it vocally. And you know what? If you get too much pushback from this culture that you can't have a thing because you don't have a uterus, just identify as a woman and keep on going. All right? God bless you. God bless you.